they're the soldiers. Let them know that by no means could they enter the house. And they turned around, and as they were walking away, they had mixed feelings. They felt a little afraid for the future, but also there was a, a little bit of excitement. Who knows what God has next? And also there's a little bit of peace, because when you follow God's will, and you know that you're obeying God, you feel at peace. But in that moment of peace, it seemed to be shattered almost instantaneously as red-faced Hugo Schwartz yells out, this is all your fault. What, what do you mean this is all our fault? You, you ruined everything by hiding Anabaptists in your home. Well, yeah. He said, and now, now I've lost my home because of you. What? You lost your... Yes, yes, and I knew about this from the beginning because I heard that you were hiding a baby. I'm the one who told on you. Oh, so you're the reason we lost our home. We lost everything. Yes, but I lost everything too. And just at that moment, along the road comes the overseer and with the overseer is a man on horse dressed about as fancy as you can imagine he has all kinds of expensive clothes on he has beautiful leather work he has this helmet with a big purple flume bursting out the top and he's prancing along on his horse and he stops Everybody says, who is this man? Hugo Schwartz says, this is the Prince Bishop. The Prince Bishop looks down and he says to his overseer, who's that? Oh, this is Hugo Schwartz, sir. The man whose property and home you now own. Excellent, the Prince Bishop says. Hugo Schwartz says, there's been a mistake. I'm innocent, I'm innocent. The Prince Bishop looks at him, almost laughingly says, <laughs> innocent of what? He says, I am not an Anabaptist. The Prince Bishop takes his whip and cracks it at Hugo Schwartz and says, don't you talk to me, you talk to my overseer. He looks at the overseer and he says, I'm not an Anabaptist, I'm not, I'm not. This are, there's been a terrible mistake. Prince Bishop looks at his overseer and he says, be sure to take all of his complaints and let him have a nice day. Then the Prince Bishop looks at the Jansen family and says, now who are these people? The overseer says, these are the ones who were hiding the Anabaptists in their home. Oh, oh, but, but they're not Anabaptists? You see, Nobody knew about father's baptism. Richard looked expectantly at his father, wondering what was going to happen. Father said, no, I too am an Anabaptist. The Prince Bishop said, what, what are you doing? Why, why would you tell me that also? And he said, here's the thing. You've taken my house, you've taken my land, You've taken all of my possessions. What more can you take besides my life? The Prince Bishop says to his overseer, wait, is this the man that we sold that land to and then returned for the land? Instead of giving him a deed of sale, we gave him a summons of excommunication? The overseer says, yes. The Prince Bishop says, excellent. I didn't make a mistake. And they ride off. Just then the miller's son comes running down the road and he's yelling, Apostles coming, apostles coming, apostles coming. They stop him, they say, Apostle, what are you talking about? He says, Don't you know what apostle is? Apostles coming. <laughs> what? Have you never heard of apostle? Oh, an apostle? Yes, that's what I said. Apostle's coming. 
He said, but shh, I'm not supposed to tell anyone. <laughs> Apostle's coming, Paul. And he took off running. And sure enough, down the road trudged an older gentleman with a long beard and a staff. And with each step, he planted the staff more firmly than you would expect. Step after step, he came closer and closer. And he looked at the family in the middle of the road and he said, hello, brethren, what's troubling you? Father said, how did you know something was troubling us? He said, oh, as I've walked through Germany, I've met many families that have troubles. What's happening here? And he said, we've just lost our home, our land, and all that we own. And he said, and why did this happen? He said, because we believe that each person should make their own decision for baptism. And the apostle looked at him and he said, and how did you come to these beliefs? Richard was excited because although he had seen private conversations, he never actually heard any of them. He didn't know how his father had come to this decision. His father looked at him and he said, my brother came here. And at first I didn't believe, but as we started studying the Bible together, it became clear that there no place in the Bible was there any talk of child baptism. And everyone needed to make a decision for his or herself. And so as we read the scriptures together, I realized the true church, each person has to make a decision on their own. And I chose to make that decision and be baptized. The apostle looked at him and he said, yes, I too have studied such things. I just came from Freisburg. Have you met Menno Simmons? How have you heard of Menno Simmons? He asked. Oh, our pastor. Our pastor studied with Menno Simmons. And I want to hear more about him. Your pastor, that's actually exactly who I've come looking for. I'm a messenger from Menno Simmons and I've come to find your pastor. Where is he? We actually don't know. The soldiers came and they took him away. Oh. Well, this whole trip was for nothing, I guess. Where are you going now? Oh, I don't know. Richard piped up, hey, we could go to the secret church where you were baptized. Father stopped and looked at, looked at him and said, how do you know about this? Richard sheepishly looked at him and said, well, actually, me, Otto, and Trudy all saw it. <laughs> what? Well, we were in the woods, and we were looking for a hiding place, and we stumbled across the secret church, and we were there when it happened. We're sorry. Oh. And so they headed off into the woods, and sure enough, there at the secret church was Otto and his family. The Miller and his family and a few other families had all gathered there together. And they said, Otto, how did you guys escape? How did you know the soldiers were coming? How did you get out of there in time? He said, actually, Trudy came and warned us. Wow. Thank goodness. That was close. And so there they were. They were talking. And the messenger from Menno Simmons gave them all kinds of good news. He assured them that of God's leading. He told them that throughout Germany, there were families like this. There were places like this. And God's word was spreading in unbelievable ways. He gave them promises of hope and assured them that if they came to Freisburg, they could too could study with the growing community there in Menno Simmons. And they asked, where exactly is he there? Oh, He's in hiding, but if you come, you'll find him. Richard and Otto found themselves off in a corner talking, and Otto says, I'm worried. What are you worried about? Well, you see, we didn't have time except to get ourselves out when the soldiers came, and hidden in Father's tunic is a list. What list? A list of all the believers. And if somehow this list gets into the wrong hands, 
It is not going to be good. What they've done to our families, this will happen to so many more families. We've got to get that list. Richard says, let's do it. And while the adults were talking, nobody was paying attention to the kids, and Richard and Otto snuck off just as the sun was beginning to set. They wove through the woods, across the field, back to the home. There were the guards. But the guards were drunk. The guards had thought, you know what? Guarding this old house from peaceful people, this will be easy. And so they were partying and drinking, and they weren't paying attention at all. And Richard and Otto snuck in the back door. And as they were looking about, Richard said to Otto, wait, where's this tunic? It's upstairs. And so they snuck up the stairs tiptoeing because although the guards were drunk, they still didn't want to get their attention. And they got upstairs and they started heading and they found the tunic. And then they were like, you know what? While we're here, we should get a few more things. We need clothes, we need bedding, we need food. These are all things that are going to make our lives a little bit easier. We should get it. And so they were grabbing things left and right, and they were impressed with how fast and how well they were doing it, when all of a sudden, they heard something. There was someone else in the house. They were sure of it. They heard steps downstairs. Steps over on one side of the house, and then steps over on the other side of the house. What was going on? Richard said, I'll go downstairs and check it out. Otto said, okay, you be careful. And Richard tiptoed down the stairs. He knew those stairs well because he knew that certain stairs made little creaks. And so he would step just in the right places, slowly, carefully going down the steps to make sure that he did not make even the slightest little creak. He got down to the bottom of the stairs. And right there, as he was about to come around the corner, ready to be attacked by whatever intruder was in there. Oh, he, he almost had to close his eyes. He was so terrified. But as he came around the corner, the door slammed and somebody had run out. What was going on? But it was strange. He felt a certain warmth. Had the guards left the front door open? It seemed like there was some heat from their fire coming into the house. No. The house was on fire. And not just a little bit, because it wasn't just on fire on this side of the house, it was on fire on the other side of the house. Whoever this intruder was had set the house on fire. 